Hi there, folks. Today we're looking at one and two step equations. And uh, we've kind of looked at equations before in the sense that uh, just using some mental math to figure out what the variable represents, what value it has to be. Now we're going to kind of go more official uh, with it and start to really break down the process and undo the process by using these things called inverse operations. So operations, uh, inverse operations are operations that cancel each other out. They undo one another. And uh, really, for addition, we have subtraction. For multiplication, we have division. For exponents, we have roots. We're not really going to use that last one just yet. We'll use it later uh, in the course as we get a little bit more advanced. But the idea here, when you think about order of operations, we see irmdos down there. That's the way I like to think of it. But remember, I had a couple things that were tied in order of operations, like addition and subtraction were tied, multiplication, division were tied, exponents, roots are tied. The reason for that is because addition and subtraction are technically the same operation. Subtraction is just the opposite of addition. And even though it's the same thing, it's the opposite version of the same thing. Multiplication and division are technically the same operation. They're just the opposite versions of the same operation. Exponents roots are technically the same operation, but they're the opposite version of that same operation. That's why they're tied in terms of order of operations, and that's why they work as inverse operations. That's why they cancel each other out. And you can think about that from the perspective of like addition and subtraction. Subtraction is really just adding a negative. Like subtracting two is the same as adding negative two. Subtraction is just a special kind of addition. It's the opposite version of addition. All right. Same thing with multiplication division. Like dividing by two, that's the same as multiplying by one half. Dividing by two and multiplying by one half are technically the same thing. All right. Division is just a special case of multiplication. It's the opposite version. All right. And we'll see that with exponents and roots at some point as well. But if we remind ourselves of order of operations, order of operations says this. It says, uh, irmdas, we've got inclusion symbols, then exponents, roots, then multiplication, division, then addition and subtraction. And see, that's the foundation for everything we do in math is that we follow those order of operations as we simplify. Okay? But when we solve equations, we're essentially using inverse operations. We're undoing the operations, which means we undo this process. Okay? If you think about any process that you've ever gone through, like tying your shoes, right? you put your socks on, then you put your shoes on, then you tie the laces. But if you want to undo that, you have to untie the laces first, then you take off your shoes, and then you remove your socks, okay? You can't remove your socks first. So even though the process required you to put your socks on first, that's the last thing you undo. You have to work backwards through the process. And that's the idea behind solving equations, is that we are undoing order of operations and we undo the operations by using the inverse operation, okay? But that tells us a couple things. It tells us what operation we need to undo the operation we have, but it also tells us the order in which those operations have to be undone, okay? For example, if I look at something like this guy, here I have 6 times x equals 18, all right? And uh, so what's happening to the x is I'm multiplying it by 6. So I just have to think, what's the inverse operation? What's the opposite version of multiplying by 6? The answer is division. It's dividing by 6. So if I want to undo multiplying by 6, I simply divide by 6. And the basic rule of solving equations is that whatever I do to one side of an equation, I am required to do the same thing to the other side of the equation. It's all about balance here. And so if I divide that side by 6, I have to divide this side by 6. And so what happens over here, 6 divided by 6 is 1, so I'm left with 1x. Over here, 18 divided by 6 is a 3, so x equals a 3. And I can easily plug that back in and check it, okay? Same thing with this one. I've got x minus 3 equals 5, so I think about what's happening to x. Well, the x, I'm subtracting a 3 from it. So I want to undo that operation. So the opposite of subtracting a 3 would be adding a 3. And so I'm going to add a 3. But whatever I do to one side of the equation, I'm required to do that same thing to the other side of the equation. It's got to be balanced. And now think about it. Over here, what it says is negative 3 plus positive 3. A negative 3, a minus 3, and a plus 3 gives me a 0, and 0 plus x is just an x, all right? On the other side, I have 5 plus 3, which is an 8. 
If I look at this one, and we'll deal with these a little bit later in the course, you do not have to worry about this right now, but think about it. When we took the, the square root the other day, that's the inverse of squaring things, all right? So here I would take the square root of each side, and the square and the square root would cancel out. I would get an x equals 3. And technically, there's actually another answer that we're missing here, but we'll deal with that a little bit later in the course, okay? I want to give you a preview, but understand that those are inverses, all right? We'll stick with multiplication, addition, and subtraction, okay? If I look at this one, it says x divided by 5. So think about what's the opposite of dividing by 5. The opposite of dividing by 5 is multiplying by 5. Whatever I do to one side of the equation, I have to do to the other side of the equation. And so again, this is like over 1. So this is like saying 5 divided by 5, which is 1. So 1 times x is an x. Over here, 5 times 4 is a 20. And that's it. I'm done. If I look at this one, again, you are not going to be required to do these just yet. Eventually, we'll get to these, but I want you to see it now. It's a preview here. But the square root, to undo that, I square each side. And again, this will come back to, um, to us a little bit later in the course. But here, this gives us an x, and this gives us a 49. And see, both of those examples, even though we're not quite ready for those, most of you can probably look at that and figure that out and say, okay, the square root of what equals a 7? Well, the square root of 49, okay? And then this one, plus 9, <clears throat> to undo adding a 9, the opposite of adding a 9 is subtracting a 9. Whatever I do to one side of the equation, I have to do to the other side. So I get x equals a negative 2, okay? And again, you can always plug these back in and check them, all right? But now that's just when we have one operation. Let's move, our, let's move on to, to more than one operation. If more than one operation is happening to the x, we have to work backwards through order of operations. It's just like anything that we do. Any, if I gave you directions to do something, all right, in order to undo that thing, you would have to work backwards, okay? So if you've ever built anything, if you build something, follow a set of directions, if you have to disassemble that thing, you have to go backwards through those directions, okay? That's the idea here, all right? For example, if I look at something like this guy, notice what's happening to the x. The x is being multiplied by a 2, and then I'm adding a 1. So if I knew what x was, if I was following order of operations, I would do the multiplication, and then I would do the addition. But if I want to undo that process, I have to go backwards. So if the first thing I did was multiply by 2, and then I added the 1, the first thing I need to undo is adding the 1. So the opposite of adding a 1 is subtracting a 1. And so again, I'm working backwards through order of operations. So I undo the addition and subtraction first. Now I can undo the multiplication. The opposite of multiplying by 2 is dividing by 2. And again, whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. So I get x equals 3. Again, you can plug it back in and check it. If I look at the next one, again, think about what's happening to x. The x is being divided by 4, and then we're adding a 3. So if I want to undo that process, if I want to undo the process of dividing by 4 and then adding a 3, I first have to undo adding the 3. And the opposite of adding 3 is subtracting 3. Now I can undo dividing by 4. The opposite of dividing by 4 is multiplying by 4. And again, whatever I do to one side of the equation, I have to do to the other side. And notice, by the time we're done, essentially we're just left with x because we're canceling out. We're getting rid of those operations, okay? I get rid of the plus 3 with a minus 3. I get rid of the divided by 4 with a times 4. If I look at this guy. Here I've got uh, x times 1 half and then minus the 4. So I undo the subtraction first. So to undo a subtracting 4, I have to add 4. Whatever I do one side, I have to do the other side. And now here's where it pays to understand that multiplication and division are technically the same thing, but they're just different versions of the same thing. They're opposite versions of the same thing. 
When I see a 1 half times x, a lot of students want to divide each side by 1 half, but then we make a lot of mistakes when we divide by 1 half, okay? Dividing by fractions is problematic, all right? But think about what that means. Dividing by, or sorry, times 1 half, that's the same as just dividing by 2. Remember that this little symbol right here, that, that fraction symbol is a division sign. This says divided by 2. That's what a 1 half really is. So to undo dividing by 2, I simply multiply by 2. If you start thinking of fraction bars as division signs, it makes fractions so much easier to deal with. Essentially, this is saying, hey, times 1 divided by 2, all right? Because that's what a fraction is. And so to undo that dividing by 2, I multiply by 2. And once again, what happens here is 2 times 1 half is a 1, which is just an x. Over here, I get an 18, okay? Think of fractions as division makes them a lot easier to deal with, especially like if I look at this one. If I think of this as a two-step equation right here, x times 3 over 4, that's like x times 3, and then that fraction bar is a division sign. It's divided by 4. So that's saying times 3 divided by 4. I can undo the division first, so to undo dividing by 4, I multiply by 4. Whatever I do to one side, I have to do the other side. What happens is the multiplication and division cancel each other out. See, the 4s cancel, so I'm left with 3x. And now to undo multiplying by 3, I do the opposite, which is dividing by 3, and I get x equals an 8. Okay? If I look at this one. Some of you might look at this and say, oh, I can distribute that 3, but let's pretend we don't know the distributive property. If I was going backwards sort of operations, think about what's happening to this x. If I knew what x was, I would add a 2 to that value first, then I would multiply by the 3. So if I'm undoing that process, I have to undo multiplying by the 3 first. So to, to the opposite of uh, multiplying by 3 is dividing by 3. So the multiplication and division cancel out. And notice, if you kind of think about it, working backwards through order of operations, I, of course I was going to undo the parentheses last. So now I undo what was in the parentheses, the addition, the opposite of adding to is subtracting to. Oh, sorry, I the blue. Blue, it's got to be in blue, right? Of course. Oh, man, how could we live with ourselves if it wasn't in blue? There we go. This one is a little bit tricky, but it's really the same as the last example. Think about how you would do this in terms of order of operations. If you had an x, you would subtract the 6 first, then you would divide by the 7. So the first thing you need to undo is dividing by the 7. we got to work backwards. And it's because, remember, there are parentheses around this. Remember those invisible parentheses we have to worry about? And so we undo the division first. The opposite of dividing by 7 is multiplying by 7. So now the 7s are going to cancel out. I'm left with the x minus 6. Ah, uh, blue! I told it to use blue. I don't know why it didn't listen to me. Sometimes computers and I, you know, we just we don't see eye to eye on, on things like, uh, you know, writing in blue. I don't know. But now to undo subtracting 6, the opposite of subtracting 6 is adding 6. And so here I get x equals looks like a negative 43. And then if I look at this last one, this one is more than two steps. Spoiler alert, all right? Little bit of a challenge here. But just like the last one, there are invisible parentheses here. So if I was thinking about what would happen to x, all right, if I knew what x was, I would multiply it by 2 first, then I would add the 3, then I would divide by the 5. So to undo all that, I have to work backwards. So I have to undo dividing by the 5 first. The opposite of dividing by 5 is multiplying by 5. So I end up with a 2x plus 3 equals a 15. And now think about what would happen to x first. If I knew what x was, I would do x times 2. Then I would add the 3. So I have to undo adding the 3 first. I have to work backwards. The opposite of adding 3 is subtracting 3. And now here, to undo multiplying by 2, the opposite of multiplying by 2 is dividing by 2. Okay? 
And here's the thing, if you understand the concept of inverse operations and working backwards through it of operations to solve, undoing the process, you can solve almost anything now, okay? Every equation that you will ever solve will follow this same basic principle. So if you understand the concept of undoing the operation while you're undoing the process, solving equations can be really easy for you, okay?